Contrary to common belief, flooding is affected by many more factors than simply the amount of rain that falls in the watershed. In this video, we will address the primary factors that influence the timing, volume, and duration of flooding. These key terms and acronyms will be used during this presentation. You can find the terms and their definitions at the web address on screen. Generally speaking, precipitation that reaches the Earth's surface will rapidly move in one of three directions. It may evaporate back into the atmosphere, it may infiltrate or seep down into the soil and eventually become groundwater, or it may move along the land as surface runoff until it reaches a river, lake, wetland, or other basin. The surface runoff that results in flooding is a factor not only of the precipitation, but also the amount of that precipitation that infiltrates into the soil. We will address each of these in turn. The two characteristics of precipitation events that have the greatest effect on surface runoff are the intensity and duration of the rainfall. The total precipitation volume of a storm is measured by the average intensity of the storm, as measured in inches per hour, and the length of time of the storm event while the total precipitation volume of a storm is a significant factor leading to surface runoff, to determine whether that surface runoff will result in flooding, we must also take into account the geographic distribution of that precipitation across the watershed. A small, intense storm over a small watershed can produce significant flooding if it affects a large percentage of the watershed's total geographic area. However, the same storm would be unlikely to result in severe flooding in a larger watershed because it would affect a smaller percentage of the watershed's total geographic area. In larger watersheds, flooding more often results from precipitation events of a long duration or from a steady succession of intense precipitation events occurring throughout the watershed. Runoff is produced when precipitation, or snowmelt, adds water to the soil surface faster than the rate at which it can infiltrate the soil. The excess water remains on the surface and flows downslope as overland flow. For example, if the precipitation rate is 2 inches per hour, but water can infiltrate the soil at the rate of only 1.5 inches per hour, surface runoff is produced at the rate of about a half inch per hour. In times of prolonged heavy rainfall, soils may become saturated to the point that the water table may lie at or near the surface in low-lying areas. In these cases, the infiltration rate is at or near zero, such that any rain that falls on these saturated areas becomes surface runoff. Surface runoff may be produced even if the soil is not entirely saturated if the infiltration rate is less than the precipitation rate. Many factors affect infiltration. Soil characteristics, slope, and vegetative cover are among the most important natural factors, along with others resulting from human alteration of the landscape. Each of these will now be addressed in more detail. The infiltration rate is heavily dependent on the soil's characteristics. Three main factors affect infiltration rates of soils, texture, moisture level, and depth. A soil with a coarse texture, such as a sandy soil, will absorb water more rapidly than one with finer particles such as clay. Drier soils will initially absorb water more rapidly than those that are wet, but as the air pockets between the particles are replaced with water, the infiltration rate decreases. Soils with greater depth to bedrock are able to contain more water than those with shallow depths. Steep slopes in watersheds tend to generate more runoff than do gentle slopes. On gentle slopes, water may temporarily pond and later soak into the soil. On steep slopes, water cannot pond, which contributes to a shorter time for the rainfall to reach the river channel, known as lag time. Steep slopes usually also have decreased soil depth, which can also limit infiltration. In general, 
vegetative cover tends to increase the infiltration rate of soils. Some water is usually intercepted by plant surfaces before it can fall to the soil surface. Plant cover and a layer of dead vegetation protects the soil surface from compaction by heavy raindrops and also slows the delivery of water to the soil surface. Plant stems help slow down water that flows over the soil surface. Plant roots help create openings in the soil. Decayed plant matter helps keep fine soil particles, such as clay, from sticking together, thereby increasing infiltration capacity. When the landscape is completely devegetated, for example, during a construction project or when a farm field lies fallow, a dramatic increase in runoff and soil erosion may result. While vegetative cover generally increases the infiltration rate of soils, not all vegetative cover affects infiltration equally. Row crops, for example, leave bare soil exposed to rain for much of the growing season and can result in increased runoff when compared with native vegetation. Tillage practices such as plowing also remove the protective layer of dead vegetation from the land surface. Compaction of soils reduces the size of pore spaces and the infiltration rate. Water commonly runs off areas that were compacted through repeated passage of people, large animals, or heavy machinery. Urban development can greatly increase the amount of precipitation that is converted to surface runoff in a drainage basin. Most paved surfaces and rooftops are impervious, meaning they allow no infiltration. They instead divert water directly to storm channels and drains. The increased surface water runoff from impervious surfaces results in a shorter lag time from rainfall to flooding because of the rapid flow of water over smooth surfaces. Some cities have taken steps to reduce these impacts. Porous pavement materials have been developed that allow some water to pass through and infiltrate into the sand and soil below. Storm runoff can be routed to artificial basins that retain water and allow it to soak in or evaporate. Other green practices that affect infiltration rates by holding runoff longer on the site where it falls include green roofs, rain gardens, and rain barrels. Today, you have learned the primary factors that influence the timing, volume, and duration of flooding.